Claire, I just want to check something with you. Your father's company was taken over by my son Christopher, wasn't it? Why are you bringing that up all of a sudden? My father is still the president of the company. He hasn't retired or resigned. Please don't say such crazy things that are not true. So, does that mean you're the next president in line? Well, that's fine anyway. I don't mind having a daughter-in-law as the president. Huh? What are you talking about? Please stop talking nonsense. Where did you get it from? I visited your house yesterday to see my son. I wanted to spend some time with him and catch up. That's when I heard about it from him. You visited our house? Are you telling me that you went in without permission? You didn't even call or text me before coming. If you're coming, you should have told me in advance. That's common courtesy. My son was home since it was a stay off, so it doesn't matter. He welcomed me warmly and we had a nice chat. You're just being paranoid, aren't you? You don't trust me, do you? I was working. I had a lot of things to do. I can't afford to waste time. Don't you dare talk back to me. You should respect me as your mother-in-law. I have a very serious question for you. Did my husband, Christopher, say that he was going to be the president of my father's company? Did he tell you that he had some plan or scheme? No, he didn't. He didn't say anything like that. I found a note in your working space. It was on your desk. I can't believe you went into my working space without permission. That's where I keep all my important documents and files. Did you ransack the house? Did you search every room and drawer? Of course not. Do you think I'm some sort of thief? We are family. So it's normal to enter each other's houses without permission. We don't need to knock or ring the bell. We can just walk in. <laughs> Please don't do that. Even though we are family, it's an invasion of privacy. You should respect my personal space and belongings. That's not important right now. What's more important is what the note said. I saw that it said that the next president will come from their heir. It must be my son Christopher. He's your father's heir, isn't he? Am I right? I just made a note on the phone conversation I had with my father. He told me some confidential information about the company. It's not for public knowledge. Even though you are my mother-in-law, I can't tell you any more than that. It's a secret. I need to know everything related to that. Christopher is one of my family's members who works for the company. He's a senior manager there. He's on the list of candidates for the next president, isn't he? I have to hear at least that much. You can tell me that, can't you? As I just told you, I can't talk to you about that because you are an outsider. You're not part of the company. You don't have any right to know. I really can't tell you anything. Well, by how you say it, I can tell that Christopher will be the next company president. He's the most qualified and capable person there. He's the best choice. Isn't that right? Please stop prying into my affairs. I can't tell you anything about that. It's none of your business. Please leave me alone. There are four of my relatives working in the company, including you and Christopher. You are the only ones who are related to me by blood or marriage. Then, it's obvious that my son will be the next president, isn't it? He's the only male relative there. Can we stop talking about this? I can't divulge any information. It's confidential and sensitive. Please respect that. No, we need to continue talking. This is very important to me. You don't have any male siblings, do you? You only have sisters, right? I have two younger sisters, for your information. They're both working in different fields. They're not interested in the company. It's impossible for a woman to take over the company. It's a male-dominated industry. That means the only male heir is Christopher. He's the only one who can inherit the company from your father. Please stop speculating and saying strange things. I can't tell you anything no matter what. You're just making assumptions and jumping to conclusions. From that reaction, it seems that I was right about the most of things. You're just trying to hide the truth from me. I'm glad to hear that. I'm happy for my son. Please, give me a break. You're driving me crazy. If you don't have any other business, can we end our conversation here? I have to go back to work. 
Maybe I should ask Christopher for an overseas trip next time. I want to go to Italy again. It's such a beautiful country. I want to see the Colosseum and the Vatican. It seems that you don't want to listen to what I say. You're just ignoring me and changing the topic. If it happens, I might as well carry out the plan. Yeah, let's do that. It sounds like a good idea. What are you talking about? What plan? What are you planning to do? Don't worry about it now. You'll find out soon enough. See you later. Bye. I'm sorry to inform you, but I've filed for your divorce. I've decided that it's time for us to end our relationships as in-laws. What? Was that really necessary after all this time? <laughs> We've been married for over 10 years. Besides, your husband passed away last year, so shouldn't you have filed marriage termination papers at that time? Why are you filing for divorce now? What are you talking about? Don't be ridiculous. I'm grateful to my husband for leaving me a lot of inheritance. He was very generous and thoughtful. There's no way I'm terminating that now. I'm still his wife, even if he's gone. Wait a minute. Then whose divorce papers did you file? If you're not divorcing your husband, then who are you divorcing? You and Christopher. It's obvious, right? You are the ones who's getting divorced. I'd file the papers on your behalf. Huh? Why? Why would you do that? What's your reason for filing for our divorce? Since Christopher has become the president of the company, I don't need you anymore. You've served your purpose. I want you to proceed with the divorce and leave him alone. What on earth are you talking about? I don't know where to begin. How can you say such things? You're making no sense. You have a harsh personality. And to be honest, I didn't like you from the start. But I put up with it because you're the president's daughter. You had some influence and power in the company. I'm glad that I can finally let that go now. I knew that you didn't like me, but you're being too arrogant, you know? You're acting like you have the right to interfere in our marriage. You don't. Shut up. All I want is my son. He's the only thing that matters to me. Even this house belongs to us. Mother and son from today. I've always dreamed of living together with my son. Just the two of us. No way. You can't do that. You can't take me away with my husband and my home and kick me out like this. We've just completed our move into the high-rise where you and Christopher live. I'm a fast worker, aren't I? I don't waste my time. I've packed all our things and moved them there. You're so selfish. How can you do this to me? This house is in Christopher's name, right? Then, it shouldn't be strange for his mother to live with him. Do you have a problem with that? Do you think it's weird? As you know, I live here too. This is my house as well. What were you thinking moving out without consulting me? You should have at least told me what you were planning to do. I mean, you're already divorced from Christopher, so it's time for you to move out. You don't belong here anymore. You're not his wife. I don't think having a discussion in advance with you is necessary. You don't have a say in this matter. Ella, please listen. Have you heard about the crime of forging documents? Do you know what that means? What is that? Do you mean it's a crime to write something without permission? To make something up? That's right. It's against the law to make a divorce decree without the permission of the persons concerned. You can't just file for divorce without our consent. If you contact the authorities immediately, it is possible to revoke it. You can undo this mistake. But I went together with Christopher, so I have his permission. He agreed to divorce you. He signed the papers and he was with me. Seriously? Is that true? Did he really do that? He's been thinking about divorcing you for a long time. He's been unhappy with you. He's been wanting to get rid of you. I wonder why you didn't notice. You're so oblivious. Gosh, that's unbelievable. I can't believe he would do that to me. 
Knowing how Christopher feels, are you still going to keep saying that you don't want to divorce him? You're pathetic. I don't know what to do. I I'm so confused. I don't understand what's going on. You have no choice anyway. Christopher and you are strangers now. You have nothing to do with each other. I've sent your stuff to your parents' house, so don't worry. You can go back to them. I can't believe you did this while I was working. You didn't even wait for me to come home and give me a chance to explain. This is just too much to bear. I don't like your personality, but in case you don't know, I'm grateful to you, okay? Thanks for being a stepping stone for my son to become the company's president. I'm sincerely in debt to you. Anyway, I'll discuss this with Christopher once. There's a lot of confusion here. I need to talk to him face to face. You can talk it over, but don't come back to the high rise, okay? I won't forgive you if you do something annoying like that. If you try to interfere with our lives, I'll make you regret it. I'm off work tomorrow, so I'll call Christopher over to the cafe and we'll talk. I'll sort this out. I'll try. It's been a week since your divorce. I know you're not over it. You're still hurting and confused. I just want you to stop obsessing over Christopher because he's not worth it. Don't worry. I'm already over it. I've accepted the reality. We talked about it and I didn't go to the authorities to cancel the divorce. I agreed to end our marriage. You're lying. Every day, Christopher says that he's going to see you. He tells me that he's visiting you at your parents' house. It's true that he comes to my parents' house every day. He shows up at the door and tries to talk to me. I knew it! You're going around calling your ex-husband and trying to get him to cancel the divorce. You are trying to win him back and manipulate him. Can you explain the current situation to me? What are you up to? I think you misunderstood. You've got it all wrong. Your son is begging me not to divorce him. He's the one who's calling me and trying to get me to change my mind. I don't think so. Christopher wanted a divorce. He was the one who asked for it. I don't see a single reason why he's going to your parents' house. Stop taking advantage of my son for your own good. You know what? Stop running off on your own without knowing what's going on. How rude. How dare you talk to me like that? Christopher said that he wants to divorce you. He told me that he doesn't love you anymore. Also, it's a fact that he's going to be the company's president. He's going to inherit your father's business. I know everything. I know what's best for him. I wonder why you said that. As a matter of fact, Christopher won't be the president of our company. He's not going to take over the company. He's not even working there anymore. Huh? That can be true. I saw the note you left with my own eyes. I saw that it said the next president will come from your father's heir. It must be Christopher. He's your father's only son-in-law. Instead of taking over the company, he's unemployed now. What are you talking about? That is absurd. Think about it carefully. In the days before the divorce, you entered our house several times without permission. You barged in without knocking or ringing the bell. Each time you came to our house, Christopher was there, wasn't he? Don't you think it's strange? Which part of that is strange? My son just happened to take a day off from work when I visited him. He was just resting at home and enjoying his free time. Our company is closed on Saturdays, Sundays, national holidays, New Year's, and summer holidays. We are on business during weekdays. We work from Monday to Friday, and yet Christopher was home? He was home on weekdays. He was home during working hours? What? I don't understand. Moreover, don't you think it's strange that he hasn't been going to work every day these days? Don't you think it's odd that he doesn't leave the house in the morning and come back in the evening? And he doesn't wear a suit and tie anymore. I think he was just using his paid leaves. I mean, he's the company's president, so he doesn't have to come to our office, right? He can work from home. You're wrong and delusional. Even if he were the company's president, it's impossible for him to take days off so often on the weekdays. Even if he uses his paid leaves, he can't just skip work whenever he feels like it. 
he has to show up at the office and attend meetings. Wait a minute, I'm getting more confused. Let me explain it to you step by step. Please listen carefully. First of all, Christopher was fired from our company six months ago. He was dismissed. What? Why? Why did that happen? He was a habitual slacker. He skipped work whenever he found time and didn't do a very good job at all. Our company can't keep a lazy person as an employee. Anyone would take a little time off to relax? Are you telling me that the company doesn't allow the employees to take a break? In Christopher's case, it went too far. It wasn't even in the category of taking a break. He said that he went to visit the client, but he ended up gambling at a casino. Because of that, he once forgot to visit an important client. No way! There's no way my son would do such a thing! I know he was unreliable and not serious about his work to begin with. I used to go together with him when I was in the same sales department. Really? But six months ago, I had to leave the sales department. That's when his slacking off habit worsened. Then that means you're the cost too, right? Of course not. Christopher is already 35 years old. I think it's normal for him to do his job on his own. No. I don't think you should leave him by himself knowing that he can't do his job without help. You were his wife, weren't you? I've been appointed as an executive director, so there's no way I can follow up on the work of the sales department. What did you say? I was appointed as an executive director. Before that, I was the head of the sales department. My father nominated me for the position, so I was promoted. You didn't hear about this. No, I didn't. By any chance, are you the company's next president? I've told you many times, but I couldn't go into details because it's a company secret. But an executive director is a pretty important position, don't you think so? I can't tell you anything about it. I'll leave that to your imagination. Then why didn't you tell me about that at an early stage? I didn't think it was a good idea to tell you that your son is unemployed. If he didn't tell you... Then at least tell him that you've become the executive director. I'm your mother-in-law. I thought you hate me. That's why I didn't tell you. Because I knew that you wouldn't be interested in me. I can't believe this is really happening. Christopher is unemployed and you're the one of the board members? I'm speechless. Oh my god. I've warned Christopher many times not to slack off. I've also given him proper guidance and training. But there was no room for improvement with him, so we had no choice but to have him quit the company. Please understand. But why did he accept my offer of divorcing you when he was such an estate? It turns out that what he wanted was the high rise where we lived and his father's inheritance. My husband's inheritance? He thought that he was going to have a high rise as part of his share of the property. And if he lives there with you, he'll also benefit from his father's inheritance. With those, he was thinking that he'll have no trouble making ends meet after the divorce. So that's why he accepted my proposal so easily, even though he was unemployed? How foolish of him! However, after discussing the matter with me, various miscalculations and misunderstandings came to light. Then, he told me that he doesn't want a divorce. I didn't know that! What did you tell Christopher when you asked him to divorce me? I just told him that he should leave you because of your harsh personality. Why did you ask that? Did you talk to him about who's going to be the next president? Christopher agreed to the divorce before I could even talk about that. That's why I told him about your misunderstanding. That's when he realized that he was relying on me financially since he was unemployed and finally started to get impatient. But that was enough to make him impatient? We still have a house, so it's not like he's suddenly going to be in trouble. That's strange. You must have some kind of plan, don't you? As for the high rise, I bought it in one lump sum before I got married. Unfortunately, Christopher can't live in it because it's not subject to property division. Didn't you buy that after you got married? I thought the two of you went to a real estate agent to look for a new house. Well, you were engaged. We did think about a new house, but my house is quite spacious and we decided it would be a shame to let it go. So you and my son continue to live there? That's right. And then when Christopher finally understood that if we're divorced, he would be homeless and jobless, he thought that it would be a bad idea to move on with the divorce under the current circumstances. So he is now begging me to cancel the divorce. After all, he's going to be kicked out of the high rise. 
I can't believe I misunderstood everything. Oh my god. Sorry to hear that. I apologize for being selfish. Please, don't divorce Christopher. It's too late, Ella. You and your son are really just like each other. I can't believe I can't even live in that Thai rice. And my son is jobless? Thank you so much for supporting Christopher until this day. I really hope that you'll continue to do the same. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> even though you've apologized to me, things won't change. You knew Christopher's personality before you married him. You wanted to support him, right? I thought he was cute at first because he was unreliable and a bit of a mess. I'm the eldest daughter, so I have a caring personality. Then you should continue to love him and me too. <laughs> Why do you expect me to take care of you and Christopher after what you've done to me? That's impossible, of course. I've sold my house since I thought I was going to live in the high rise. What am I supposed to do now? You got a lot of inheritance from your husband, right? Besides, you're a pensioner, so why don't you do your best to make ends meet? I can't do that. That's why I moved out. You should have guessed. Are you kidding me? Did you spend all of your husband's inheritance? Well, something like that. Well, you said before that you wanted to go back to Italy again, but looks like you've been traveling overseas so much that you've run out of money. I was just so happy because I suddenly got a lot of money. I went on a cross-country tour of Europe and also a gourmet tour of Korea. Before I knew it, my balance turned to zero. So please, don't give up on me. Give me a break. <laughs> on top of that, I even got a bill for the property tax on my house. I thought it was impossible to live in my pension alone. That's when I found out that Christopher might take over your father's company. Strictly speaking, that was your own mistake. Isn't that what you deserved? Don't say that. It was a ray of light for me. That's why I was going to make him divorce you and keep his earnings to myself. I never thought this would happen. If you had consulted me in the first place, I would have helped you a lot. Looks like you never listened to anyone. Then, help me now. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm ready to forgive you after what you've done to me. So, you don't even love my son anymore? My feelings have completely cooled off after this incident. I wonder if someone's feelings can change that easily. Christopher said he felt inferior and desperate because his wife had got a promotion and he was unemployed. But that doesn't mean I can go back with someone who can decide on divorce so easily. But you said you have a caring nature, didn't you? Why don't you take care of me and my son as your hobby? It'll be fun. Please don't say anything without thinking in advance. It's not the same as taking care of someone you love. Oh no, then what should I do? Please think about that on your own. As for the high rise, we are preparing to sell it, so please leave as soon as possible. Please take care of your own son from now on. <laughs> don't abandon us. Help us. You are our only hope. Clear. After that, I also proceeded with the sale of the high-rise and got rid of my mother-in-law and ex-husband. The last time I saw my mother-in-law and ex-husband, they were crying like babies. How embarrassing. My ex-husband was coming to my parents' house every day, so I warned him that if he came again, I would report him to the police. As a result, he got scared and stopped doing that. And then time passed. I was nominated by my father to be the next president of the company, and now I'm working hard every day so that I can manage the company properly. My days are so busy that I have a newfound respect for my father. I have not been in contact with my mother-in-law and my ex-husband since then. Rumor has it that my ex-husband has not been able to find a new job. He kept changing his job since he's not capable of working at the same place for a long term. The property division that I gave him as a last mercy seems to have been used up immediately. Now, they are living in poverty with only my mother-in-law's small pension. I tried to do everything I could, but it couldn't be helped. I feel bad about the way we parted, but from now on, I will forget about those two and try to do my best for the company in my own happiness.